This is Access Houston on 97.9 The Box. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth. Welcoming from Rebuilding Together Houston, I have the CEO and Executive Director, Christine Holland. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you so much for being here. I mean, um, I've had you all on the program uh, before, but this is my first time having you here. The CEO, she makes she makes things happen. She's the executive director, and uh, with rebuilding together, Houston, that is something that we're going to be doing for probably about ten years now, Christine. I, I think that uh, Houston has more resources than New Orleans had after Katrina, mm-hmm. but it, you're you're right. I mean, Katrina is still not completely finished. The yeah. work. Of rebuilding, and that um, was oh five. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you you hit the nail on the head. Um, in Houston, we think we can get a lot done over the next four to five years, mm-hmm. and uh, we're here to help as many people as we can. For thirty six years, rebuilding together, Houston has provided no cost home repairs to low income senior citizens, U.S. military veterans, and people with disabilities. Uh, last year was a very good year for us, even not thinking about Harvey. Mm-hmm. Um, we had over 5,000 volunteers and we helped over 750 homeowners. Oh, wow. But now, um, now thousands and thousands of Houstonians are affected by Harvey and there is so much more for us to do. So this past week, um, with the weather being really cold, uh, our team was out inspecting homes for the rebuilding that we're doing in the month of January, Mm -hmm. which is mostly going to be in Independence Heights this month. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of our inspectors found a woman using her oven to heat her house. Oh, yeah. The old uh, (laughs) growing up in the hood or in the projects trick to keep the house warm. But but, but even more so if you don't have any sheetrock or insulation or if the storm damaged the exterior of your house. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just so glad to be here with you today to talk about what our neighbors need and to let your listeners know what they can do to help. Absolutely. And, And that is what that is what we do up here Uh, you know i i say on this program all the time i use this platform because this is my second show i have another show Mm -hmm. on magic 102 uh, at night but this show particular i use it to make us the whole community all of houston or how far we reach if it's northeast texas to make us more aware Mm -hmm. and to let us know about services and things that are going on and uh rebuilding together houston is definitely one of those staples that are um, in the community. Um, how did they start? Give us a brief history of well, uh, rebuilding, rebuilding together. Well, Rebuilding Together has been around for 36 years. It was started by Rob Mossbacher and a bunch of other businessmen mm-hmm. who felt that there were a lot of things that needed to be done in the community. And they worked on a lot of different things um, in the beginning because even in those days, there was a lot of need in Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, and then over the course of time, they found that the rebuilding work was the biggest gap Mm. and where they could make the most impact. So today, Rebuilding Together is um, still very much supported by uh, corporate partners who are on our board and corporate teams that come out and repair houses. Um, But we're also supported by faith-based groups, by schools, um, all different sorts of volunteer teams. So. Yeah. You listen to Access Houston. We're talking to Christine Holland, who is the CEO and executive director for Rebuilding Together Houston. Um, what was the response like for you all um, for Harvey? Uh, were you getting just inundated with calls for people helping and or calls for people wanting to help? We actually had both. Um, I think we probably have right now in our system about 2,000 homeowners that need help, Mm -hmm. and um, we're going to have even more coming in. We had a lot of homeowners prior to Harvey that needed our help, and we're going to continue working for them. Harvey is just something additional that is going on for us. Um, We had so, I mean, you are here. You saw the outpouring of support, the Cajun Navy, people from church groups around the country all the people that individuals were here. yes people just driving around till they saw somebody that needed help um that was what was happening right after the storm and uh a lot of those people contacted us and that wasn't the time for us now, now is, the, is time. the time yeah now is the time for us we uh 
we've got homeowners that need help. We have materials. We have tools. We have everything we need, but we need more volunteers. Indeed. So with that, what must one do to become a volunteer for rebuilding and with Rebuilding Together Houston? Well, um, the easiest thing is to go to our website, rebuildinghouston.org, and hit the volunteer button. You can volunteer as an individual. You can volunteer as a team. Um, We do, in the wake of Harvey, need volunteers that have specific skills like hanging sheetrock, carpentry, um, people who have some painting expertise. Mm -hmm. But... Anyone can come work with us because we have a few skilled people on every crew. And then every other person that just has a willing heart and willing hands, we can teach them. We can teach them right on the job site um, how to do these things. Mm -hmm. So not only are they helping their neighbors, but potentially they're going home with a skill set that they didn't have before. Um, I'm amazed in the short time that I have been at Rebuilding Together Houston, I've learned quite a few things. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I've, I've actually got some construction-type skills oh, now. Oh, well, let me find out, Christine. What, <laughs> what, what is it that we can do now? <laughs> well, I I actually asked Santa for a caulk gun, uh-huh. and I got one. Wow. He delivered. You're gonna... <laughs> so I'm a master caulker. You're going to be caulking the... What needs to be done first, the kitchen or the bathroom? <laughs> well, actually, I was caulking the exterior of homes. But oh, oh, oh. Caulk is everywhere. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> You're getting into it there. <laughs> and it, it really is. It's so rewarding to yeah. work with Rebuilding Together Houston. Um, we're a little different than other volunteer opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, many of our volunteers say this is the best experience they've ever had. At the end of each day, they can see the results of what they did. Um, we connect our volunteers directly and personally to the homeowners. Um, a lot of times a crew will line up and each person will hug the homeowner before they call so it quits for the day. So just building that relationship. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, it's, that it's, sense of family and togetherness. It's an amazing feeling. Duh. Together is in the title of the organization. <laughs> exactly. Um, and it's really interesting. Uh, I found out that we have 30 crews that have returned to work with Rebuilding Together for 10 years or more. Wow. And we have several crews that have been with us for over 25 years. So, they're committed. Once they're in, they're there for life. Oh, once you've had the experience, you want to have it again. I mean, yeah. it really it really does help so much. And like I said, volunteering with us is something anybody can do. We'll find a crew for individuals, and we want your listeners to come and make a difference in the community. Put your hands and your heart to work. We'll help yeah, you. Indeed. And, and, and that's what the spirit of Houston is. I have to tell you, I, during the, um, the, the brunt of the uh, the hurricane and and the flooding. I wasn't here. I had flew home that weekend. I'm from Ohio, mm. uh, Dayton, Ohio, and I had flew home just that quick weekend uh, because my brothers uh, they were throwing a fight party. There was the Mayweather McGregor mm. uh, boxing match that weekend, and so what turned in what was supposed to be just a little quick weekend out on a Friday back on a Sunday ended up being nine days because you could because get of home. Harvey right, mm-hmm. and uh, was just very frustrated that I wasn't here to be able uh, to help. And um, felt what people were going through once I got back, even though the water was receded, things kind of were beginning to get back to normal for folk. Um, I definitely could tell that, A, something happened here because it just felt differently. I was just the debris on the corners and, and everything. And then I was trying to get gas, couldn't get any gas, couldn't get anything to eat. I just so happened to find a a, a food truck in one of the um, shopping centers along Westheimer. So I was lucky enough to get food. But as I'm getting that food, um, there's two guys that's waiting on theirs, and they're talking about, man, I hope we can get back to uh, uh, closer to downtown before the curfew kicks in. And I forgot about that. I was like, oh, man. So in that moment, Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, I can only imagine what people were going through while they were in the thick of it. And watching it back home in Ohio on the news – it was just so it was remarkable to see how everybody was helping everybody because earlier that month we had saw the you know those races in Charlottesville you know and i was Houston. like i was like this is this cannot be where we're going but watching Houston mm-hmm. do it themselves and help everybody regardless of whatever situation it, it restored my faith in humanity and i I was just so grateful for that. I was like, look at my city. I'm I'm proud to say I've only been here five years, but 
this is home this for is me. Home, right. Yeah, it is. Well, we, we all can see our own friends and family struggling with the stress mm-hmm. and the magnitude of what it takes to recover from this storm. Um, when you consider the neighbors that Rebuilding Together serves, they don't have the resources or the network to even begin to rebuild. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, the debris on lawns was something that was just shocking. Oh. It's like a, the, the whole interior of a house out on the street. Well, let me tell you, for these people, the debris is gone, but we know that there are people living in homes that have no walls. Yeah, We know there are people living in houses where mold is growing on yes. the walls Get out of because my we haven't yeah. even taken out the sheetrock and insulation. And just as a human being, to think of other people living in those conditions, right? It, it's hard. We want to we want to get them all back to a safe and livable home as quick yeah. as we can. Because the long term health complications oh. from that is it could be at times fatal. Yeah, it could. So um, one of our one of our favorite homeowners is Miss Barbara. Mm-hmm. Um, she's seventy seven years young. And she has the most beautiful and loving spirit. We were out visiting with her uh, just before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And Miss Barbara has worked hard to raise her kids and her home. It's the anchor for her extended family. Her two remaining sisters, her son, all her nieces and nephews. Everybody goes to Miss Barbara's house. And when Hurricane Harvey struck, she had three feet of water in that house. Um, she knew about rebuilding together because we had helped her with some repairs in 2015. Uh So she reached out to us again. We answered her call and her home as of last week is safe and livable again. Uh, See, that's a great story. It's one of the first, but we are going to be doing so many more. Um, we hope to do 250 this year. Wow. And we'll do more if we have resources and, and, you know, Everybody can have a share in this. If you can't volunteer, then then donate. But we really we need, need we all need our it. neighbors. Yeah. Where, where can they go again to sign up to volunteer? RebuildingHouston.org. Um, and you also can call our office. Uh, the phone number there, 713-659-2511. Indeed. Oh, w- we're all in this together. So um, we can rebuild on. Houston together. We can, we can rebuild Houston together, and um, we are, and we are. So I, I thank you so much for your time, Christine Holland, the CEO and Executive Director from Rebuilding Together Houston. Let's let's do that. And thank you so much for coming on. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. Come and rebuild a house for us. Yeah, I brought absolutely. You a t-shirt and everything. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, I'm I'm handy. No, I I, I absolutely <laughs> would. That would hearten that that would lighten my heart to yeah, bring to help out. And we'll, we'll do that. Do something cool. Good. And um you'll come back later on in the year for a follow-up? I would be thrilled to. Bet. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth. Got in the studio with me. He is back, ladies and gentlemen, the president of 100 Black Men of Metro Houston, Mr. Kenneth Robinson, Jr. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you added the junior on there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's been going on, man? Happy New Year. This is my first time seeing you uh, since the New Year. Yeah, yeah. Happy New Year to you, too, man. Yeah, so what's going on over there at 100 Black Men? Man, we're just staying busy mentoring kids um, every second and fourth Saturday over at TSU. So just taking our chapter and our mentees to the next level. Yeah, talk about the, uh, it's been 24 years now? Yes, 24 years. Yeah, this uh-huh. year makes 24 years. So. For those who may not be familiar with you know, 100 Black Men of Metro Houston, you know, let them know what you all do. Well, we're a mentoring organization, and we teach young men how to just basically be better citizens of the community, whatever community they're going to be in whether it's Houston or another city or state. Um, we have mentoring sessions that teach the young men how to tie ties. We do etiquette training. We also do social media pitfalls. And one of our biggest programs is keeping our boys out of the criminal pipeline, which we bring in various judges around the city of Houston and district attorney's office and talk to the young men around the community that come to our sessions along with their parents, um, basically just to kind of tell them, hey, you get pulled over by a cop, this can happen you know, or this is how you should react. So mm. just giving them different scenarios and just trying to make them aware of everything that's happening in the city. I'm sure it's been uh, pretty interesting uh, in this era of Trump <laughs> um, because, you know, here in Texas, especially here in Houston, you know, so culturally diverse. Yes. yes. And um, everyone who 
he is against uh, lives in this city. Yes. Uh, pretty much because that's just how uh, diverse we are. Um, I was talking to the boys about just what is going on today. Are they even focused on that? Or you guys just kind of stay away from uh, government stuff and just focus on home mm-hmm. and, and, and morals and, and, and values? Yeah, we, we try to educate them. We tell them that, hey, we're here for you no matter what happens uh, with the current administration. It is an interesting system, situation right now. So, <laughs> Beyond but, interesting. Uh, yeah, so we, we just try to educate them. We also educate the parents as well. We mm-hmm. have a session on voting, and we try to inform the parents, hey, this is why it's important to vote, because you you still have a voice. Yeah. So. As a matter of fact, you know, early voting is starting anyway, but that's a, yeah. uh, we'll get into that a little later. You're listening to Access Houston. We're talking to Kenneth Robinson, Jr., president of 100 Black Men of Metro Houston. Um, so it, it, we're coming up to that time again for your big uh, fundraiser, Gala, Cos- Co- Lord. Casino Couture. Casino Couture, yeah. It, I got a little tongue-tied with that. 100 <laughs> Black Men of Houston's Casino Couture. Yes. And it's happening on uh, Friday the 2nd. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so what goes down at this uh, event? I like the theme, though. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, it's it's a part, It's our version of a party with a purpose. So okay. it's just an in- interesting party. We we have fun. Um, it's it's a fundraiser. So this the money that we raise from this particular event helps to put on our programming efforts with, you know, the keeping our boys out of criminal pipeline. Also our college tour we do every year. We take a group of young men on the HBCU college tour. So that helps cover the funds for them to be able to take these trips. But it's a great event, kind of the who's who of Houston shows up in the city to this particular event. So it's a great place to be. Yeah, Casino Couture. Cocktails, charity, and dancing. But this year they've got a a Motown theme. So it's the Motown Bash. Yes, costume themed. Uh, Last year we did a great Gatsby themed event. This year it's Motown. So if you got a costume, there is a contest to wear. So. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, man, that's dope. Uh, what, what made y'all want to go with the Motown theme this year? We just try to do a theme that we think everybody's going to love. Uh, and participate in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we try to, you know, us African-Americans love to dress up. So we try to figure out what we can do to have everybody dress up and come out. So like I said, last year, I believe we had 500 people come out to this particular event. So every year it keeps growing. It keeps so, growing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and And it's going to be even bigger as it as it keeps growing um yes sir uh, tell us where where's it going to be it'll be at the hilton post oak mm-hmm. right in the gallery okay and people can uh, uh get more information and get tickets yes at they can go on our website www.100blackmenhou.org all the ticket information is there information about our program and they can also go on our social media pages as well to get the information okay that's 100 black men H O U dot org, 100 black men, H O U dot org. Uh, what's your um, Instagram and all of that? Because I don't even think I'm following y'all on Instagram. We, 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 that's a good question. I don't even know the Instagram. But if you go on our website, there's the icon at the top that you can yes. click on and it takes and it you straight you to all our Facebook. Social. Yeah, it takes you straight to our Facebook page and there's a bunch of other links to it as well. So, indeed. We'll have all our photos, mentoring articles everything up there okay um kenneth robinson from 100 black men in the studio with us this morning um they got casino casino couture which is happening on friday february 2nd at the hilton in the galleria area um with the mentoring and the mentoring sessions yeah that you all have um what are some of the topics of the uh mentoring sessions because i'm sure that there's a some parents that's listening right now like i need to get my boy in yeah. involved in this. Uh, so when you all have the mentoring sessions, what are some of the topics you all cover? Uh, like I said, we'll do one called Social Media Pitfalls. That's our, our next one we have coming up. Um, mm. Teaching a young man about, hey, you be careful what you post on social media. Every, we know everybody's doing it, but we want you to be aware because that stuff sticks with you for a for lifetime. Ever. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. It's going to be your digital footprint. Yeah. So um, so that's one, our, that's one of our next ones. We did one called Etiquette Training where we taught the young man about plate settings and how to tie ties. We had one young man um, came to our session, knew how to tie a bow tie. So he was showing some of the members, including myself, all how to tie a bow tie. So it, it, it's great, man. It's it is great. And, and the things like, you know, dinner etiquette, table etiquette and all mm-hmm. that is very important. I was at a gala 
just this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's it's at a nice hotel. Mm -hmm. Table is set as it traditionally is set. But somebody at the table didn't know that (laughs) everything to your right is yours. You Correct. know what I mean? They was grabbing the wrong tea, grabbed Correct. the wrong, uh, they, they were eating, Lord, they were eating their dinner with a salad fork. And it was just like, oh, okay, yep. nobody here. So yeah. those things are very important, even though yeah. small and minor, just very important. Yeah, yeah. We, we teach them about that. Like I said, we have another one uh, called Life After Professional Sports, mm-hmm. where we bring in professional athletes that have retired from the game. And just talk to them about their life after, after professional sports. Because yeah. a lot of young men, especially during football season, they're playing high school football. Um, so that's their dream to be in the NFL, which most young men it, it is to be a professional ball player at some point in time. But, you know, we tell them, hey, it's more to that. And the guys come in and say, hey, it's a small percentage of guys that actually make it to the they NFL it, yeah. and the NF- NBA. So it's a yeah. bunch of sessions. Uh, what was another one we did recently? We had a mentor in the medicine um, where we brought in African-American physicians to talk to the young men about this is how you get into medical school. These are some of the, the trials and tribulations we've had and all the high points that we've had uh, getting mm-hmm. into medical school. So. And they enjoyed it. They actually had to have one-on-one conversation with those physicians as well. So we partnered with MD Anderson and Baylor to put on that particular event. I want to say we had close to 200 there, 200 people in attendance for that one. Oh, that is dope. So listen, parents, if uh, you want to get your child, your son involved uh, in this mentoring program that's being offered by 100 Black Men of Houston, mm-hmm. visit the website, 100blackmenhou.org. That's 100 Black Men. H-O-U dot O-R-G and save the date for Friday, February the 2nd for Casino Couture, Cocktails, Charity, Dancing and more. Uh, the theme is it's the Motown Bash. So uh, dress up from uh, from back then, back, back yes, in, the, in, in, in the Motown era. Now, is there a like, particular decade? Because they kind of stretch from like the 60s up to, Today. you know, to... Yeah. Yeah. No. No. No particular theme. I mean, you can go like you said from Jackson Five mm-hmm. to Neil if you want. So yeah. Okay. It's, it's going to cover all spectrums. So. Okay. Got that. And uh, it'll be at the uh, the Hilton uh, in the Galleria area. That's uh, two thousand one Post Oak. But again, for all of the info, just log on to one hundred Black Men H O U dot org. Man, Kenneth, thanks for stopping through, man. Oh, thank I you hope for to having, uh, man. I hope to be able to catch it. You know, I'm I'm down in Texas City on uh, Friday nights uh, doing Hopefully a remote down out. there for Magic. Uh, so I leave there kind of late. That's kind of like an hour drive, but I'm a I'm, I'm gonna try to pop up, okay. pop in there. Let me know and do that thing, man. Uh, no doubt. Uh, but thank you for coming through. Thank you, and thank you for listening to Access Houston. We'll be back with more Access Houston on 97.9 The Box.